I've never had much game when it comes to men. Sure, I consider myself to be pretty awesome, but I always felt sort of overlooked, invisible to guys. Now, my best friend Rachel, she's got game. <laughs> she just always had more experience, more relationships, more sex than I did. She would start conversations with things like, so I slept with my Colombian florist this weekend, what'd you do? <laughs> a few years ago, Rachel and I decided to go to Paris for a week for vacation. And one thing I was intent upon doing was taking a cooking class. I'm really into cooking, and I wanted to learn to make something super French, and I wanted to be challenged. I wanted to learn to make something I wouldn't be able to figure out on my own. So we signed up to learn to make macarons, those fancy French sandwich cookies that come in all the pretty colors that are so popular today. And we arrived at our cooking school in Montmartre on a sunny spring morning. We met our teacher, uh, an Australian woman, and our fellow students, a bunch of American women, <laughs> all chicks, of course, and we get started. And the very first thing that our teacher explains to us is that Macron are the diva of cookies, and if but one of your measurements is two grams off, we have to start all over again. So, well, I wanted to be challenged. <laughs> so. We get started, and we're making our batter, and we're making our fillings. We had three fillings that day. A raspberry jam, a salted caramel, and a passion fruit ganache. And as we're making our batter and our fillings, and I'm piping pink batter into rounds onto the parchment paper, I hear the door to the kitchen open. And I look up, and there is this man standing in the kitchen. And he's got dark eyes and dark hair with a lot of product in it. And <laughs> A, f a funny half smile on his face and all the girls in the class look at each other like who is that and our teacher introduces him she says this is Danielle our kitchen assistant today and he's very late let's all get back to work <laughs> so we get back to work and um, eventually our cookies go into the oven and while they're baking we get to have a little break and I find myself sitting on one side of the kitchen sipping an espresso looking at Danielle on the other side of the kitchen, sipping his espresso. And I'm thinking, this guy is so good looking, he has gotta be married, or have a girlfriend, or both, I don't know, he's French. <laughs> and even if he were single, there are a lot of girls here, including the lovely Rachel, why would he notice me? But just at that moment, our eyes met, and he winked at me. But I thought that he like had something in his eye or had a tick or something. <laughs> so we eventually get back to work and we're assembling our cookies and filling them. And then it happened again. He winked at me again. But this time, I genuinely, genuinely believe that he is winking at everybody, that he just winks at all the girls in the classes and I'm just one of them. Eventually the class concludes and we get to try our cookies and they really are spectacular. The cookie is tender and sweet. The raspberry jam is bright and tart. The caramel is salty and sweet. And the passion fruit ganache is basically heaven in cookie form. And we box up our cookies and we go to thank our teacher for a wonderful class. And then we go to thank Danielle because, but it's really more of an introduction. We hadn't had a chance to meet before then. So I go to introduce myself to Danielle and it becomes immediately clear that Danielle does not speak any English. And I don't speak any French except important words like fromage and croissant. So Rachel speaks French though. So she jumps right in there and they start chatting away. A few minutes later, she calls me back over because she's arranged for us to take a photograph with him. Total tourist move, totally worth it. And uh, we say our goodbyes and we get our cookies and we leave. And when we get outside, I say to Rachel, what did you guys talk about? She was like, oh, I gave him our phone number and I invited him to, I invited him to come out with us tomorrow night and I told him to bring a friend. We like high five and basically skip back to the metro. We're so excited. <laughs> the next night, we're headed to go meet Danielle and his friend. And at this point, I'm pretty sure that Danielle is into Rachel. Why wouldn't he be? She's beautiful and charming and uh, they can talk to each other. So. I'm kind of hoping, like, maybe the friend is cool, maybe the friend speaks a little English. So we arrive at the bar, and Danielle arrives a few minutes later looking handsome as ever, but he is by himself. He doesn't bring a friend. And my heart sinks, because now I'm, like, on their date. But it's our final night in Paris. I'm gonna make the most of it. So 
we sit down, we get a couple of drinks, and Rachel and Danielle are chatting. Uh, and I'm trying to talk to Danielle using Rachel as my translator, but it's only moderately effective and mostly clunky and awkward. Uh, but we decide, nevertheless, to go to another bar. And as we're walking, Danielle and I are walking side by side down the sidewalk, and Rachel's a few paces behind. And suddenly I feel Danielle standing really close to me, and I can smell his cologne. And then I feel his fingers intertwine with mine. And my, start, my heart starts racing, and my cheeks get all hot, and I'm sure I'm smiling, the biggest smile. And we walk hand in hand for about a block, and then he leans over and gets close to me again, and he gives me the world's most awkward first kiss of all time. <laughs> I don't know if it was his nerves or my nerves. I'm like a hot mess at this point. The fact, the fact that we're walking, our heads are bobbing at different paces, like the physics are just really not on our side, or just the fact that I was unprepared. I was still excited about the hand-holding. So... <laughs> In any case, he totally kissed me. And Rachel, seeing all of this, realizes her translation services are no longer necessary. And she graciously excuses herself back to our hotel. And Danielle and I spend the rest of the night walking around Paris, hand in hand, kissing and giggling. We figured out the kissing. And uh, we ended up making out all night on one of those bridges that overlooks the Seine under the moonlight. And the whole time, I'm thinking, oh my god, I cannot believe this American girl in Paris fantasy is happening to me. The next day, we came home, and I left Paris with three things. A box of perfect diva macaron, um, a hickey or two, <laughs> and the realization that maybe I do have game, after all. <laughs>